Hey, this is Jared Krause, host of the Buying Online Businesses podcast. And again, I had a good friend on board with me, Mr. Charlie Valher from Outsourcing Angels, who has been buying and selling businesses and building websites for many years now and is absolutely crushing it. And in this episode, we talk about what you need to know before jumping on the phone and chatting with a seller. And we dive deep into finding out what the motivation of the seller is, the types of questions you need to be asking the seller, what you need to do to prepare and make sure you get as much as you can from the call to help you understand if the business is a really, really good investment to move forward with and proceed and buy, or to just build really good relationships and connect with people and get a great education out of speaking to sellers. So if you're looking at buying websites and wanting to jump on the phone with sellers and learning more about their businesses and buying great investments, I dare say this is one of my favorite and probably the most valuable and knowledgeable podcast episodes we've recorded. So jump on, have a listen, and I'll, I'll look forward to speaking to you in another one. Hey guys, and welcome back to the podcast. I'm talking again with Mr. Charlie Valher from Outsourcing Angels and from charlievalher.com. And Charlie, we, we've got something really important to talk about. I know just before our podcast and recording this, that we, we both emphasize, emphasized how important speaking to the website seller actually is. And I know that you have gone away and bought some businesses recently, and I'd love to hear your learnings on speaking to the seller and then share some of the learnings that I've had in my experience from buying multiple businesses and teaching my clients as well. So what would be, in your opinion, Charlie, one of the most profound learnings that you've found from speaking to the sellers in trying to find out, you know, data and information about websites before you actually go away and pull the trigger. Thanks for having me back on the show, Jared. I really enjoy doing this. Thanks for jumping on. Now, it's it's such a good question and topic. And I mean, I might as well just tell everyone what I said before we started this episode. Yep. Um, I kind of believe at the moment we live in a time where most people are keyboard warriors. Um, or I suppose we'll say touchscreen warriors now. Um, for the mobile users, but people just don't speak to people anymore like they used to. Um, the world's changed dramatically and it's the tendency these days that we send to like avoid it and spend more time on like maybe the analytics or maybe digging into other things in this aspect. And because of that, I firmly believe that, you know, speaking to people that are selling their business or website in this case is something that's getting a lot of neglect when there's so much value to be had here. There's actually, I think that there's a lot of missed opportunity in not taking this part of the, I suppose, buying a website experience more and more seriously. I wholeheartedly agree. And it's so easy. And that's the reason most people are screen warriors or keyboard warriors, as you say, is it's just easy to hide behind that. And it's pretty confronting to speak to, especially when you're first starting, to speak to the seller of a business that you want to buy. And then on top of that, have to ask some pretty important questions and kind of sem people think it's like a semi-interrogation, but I want to explain to people why it's not an interrogation and why it can be a conversation. But you're certainly right. It's, in my opinion as well, it's probably the most important step in performing due diligence for a business i'll give it equal weight i really will i think there's for me it's like the analytics and data side i always like to do before i have the conversation and um, i just find that it allows me to ask better questions and it allows me to i suppose see if they're lying or understand their own business well so if i find something in the data or the analytics that i want to ask a question about um, I want to have done that first. And I'll kind of weight them evenly. I think there's, you know, you should treat them very evenly, but I can certainly uh, understand the argument of why you would even think this is more important than the data side of it or going through the, you know, analytics or, I don't know, maybe other financial information or something like that. Yeah, I agree. It it certainly goes hand in hand. I Yeah, I agree. It's The data is, the mo is, is very important first before you do this. And, 
Uh, apologies to everybody listening. I had the assumption that everybody knew to go away and, and do your research on the data first and get the prospectus of the business and crunch the numbers and look at the SEO and the traffic and all that sort of stuff. And for those of you guys who don't know much about due diligence, jump onto my website uh, and click on the resources and grab my due diligence framework. And by doing this, these types of due diligence, like you're saying, Charlie, is you can get that data and it really allows you to have way better questions for the seller. And it's not just a point of like, hey, jump on the phone to the seller and ask a few questions and get to know them. That's not really the point of it. The point of it is to get as much information from them about their business to give you the information that you need to understand whether it's a good investment or not. And then Absolutely. go away and, and double check and cross reference everything that they've told you onto that data you've got, yeah. Absolutely. That's that's the um thing. You will I like to believe most people will tell the truth as much as they can. But uh my experience is that people kind of fabricate a little bit or fudge the uh numbers or fudge what they tell you just a touch. So data's a great way of keeping these things in check. Makes it harder for anyone to get away with anything. But um, I want I want to kind of like emphasize some things here though because like I, I'm, I suppose I'm almost painting this in a negative picture, but the re- the reality is is that when you're speaking to someone that's selling a business or a website, they're often very motivated to give you great information and be helpful so that you buy it. Like it's within their best interest. I agree, and it's it's that's why they want to give you really good answers as well. And the more honest a seller can be, the better. Because when you tell somebody that something you don't particularly want to tell them about your business when you're trying to sell it and it doesn't, make, it doesn't paint your business in the best light but it's honest, that builds so much more trust around the transaction. And you know, if somebody tells me something that I, I believe that they didn't really need to tell me about the business... I'm going to have so much more faith in that business and that person who has built it as well. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's silly for people as sellers to just try and focus only on the positives. Uh, and that's something that you guys should be able to pick up on when you do go away and jump on the phone and speak to the sellers. Yeah, absolutely. And there's, there's three things I love to get out of a call when I speak to someone. These are my three things. You probably have uh, dramatically better answers. You have more experience than me uh, in this area, Jared. Uh, But when I do a call with someone about their business, there's kind of three things I really, really think about. Now, the first one is I really want to understand the motivation for sale. Like, why are they selling the business? Now, uh, I might be a bit of a skeptic or a negative Nancy, um, but I really want to establish that someone's selling it for the right reasons because if they're not this could be a red flag right away so my favorite answer or the one i really love to get is that they've got another business that they want to focus on it's like that's like my favorite answer because that means the business might be good and often is it's just that something else is taking up their time and it's suffering from neglect so that's something i really really like to hear in these types of calls Um, And just an example, I recently looked at a business and uh, the guy I was going to buy this business from, um, he just got funding, like literally VC funding. Someone had just given him like uh, $5 million, right, to put in his business. And he's like, I've got to get rid of every other distraction. Hmm. I'm like, what a great reason to sell a business. And congratulations to him as well. Yeah, totally. He was was, um, awesome to deal with because like he was very motivated. He's like, I need this gone now. Yeah. Um, so I really enjoyed that. And like, you know, understanding the right motivations um, can be a really powerful thing. Uh, one of the ones that I, I look at and I just say, oh, this hurts me a little bit. is like if someone says to me, oh, I, I need the money. Like, you know, it's like, well, shouldn't the business be making you money? <laughs> yeah. So that's a bit of a flag one for me when someone's like, oh, I need the money for something else or you know, that, that type of one I tend to avoid because that probably means that it hasn't been developed as well as it could be. So that's my area number one, understanding the motivation for sale. And like there's so many reasons why someone would sell a good business, right? There's no reason to think that everyone's trying to scam you. So like you know, that's a really big one. I know that's something you're big on in your community is understanding that in the due diligence as well, Jared. Yeah. And sorry, I don't want to cut, I don't want to cut in, but while we are on that is that 
when you said, um, you know, some people are skeptics and it's okay to have that level of skepticism when you're speaking to a seller or looking at a business because you do need to, do need to be a skeptic in a certain sense where you need to see if it's a good investment. So it's not totally a bad thing. Totally. I, I completely agree. So my second thing and my middle point here is what I next try to understand. And this, oh, I don't want this to come out badly, but it probably will. Um, <laughs> Is like I like to understand uh, what level someone's at and how well they understand and verify their own business. I've got a story with this one. Yeah, great. That'd be awesome. Okay, so I'll give you an example. Like sometimes people don't realize what they've got. All right, and I know this is sounding weirder and weirder, but I once spoke to a chick who had a website doing um, like a million hits a month, right? But she didn't know a thing about SEO. It was accidental SEO. Wow. Right, crazy, crazy times on the internet. She just was a fantastic writer, and basically, people shared her content perfectly. Excellent. So she had like a cult following. Um, so what happened there is like I was like sizing this person up and understanding, you know, like what's your approach to traffic, and she's like, "Well, I don't have one. I just write." <laughs> um, and we laugh about that now because like there's people out there that would be kill for that. Yeah. Um, but it was like really, really interesting for me is like, I like to really gauge like, you know, is this person an SEO nerd, a high level SEO person? Should I be taking their advice on SEO or are they someone that's got phenomenal conversion rate optimization skills? Is that their strength area? Yeah. Do they have terrible skills? Are they great at relationships? Like what is the skill set and things I can look at this person from? Or like, have they hired people well to do the work? What are the contacts for the hire? So I really like to kind of eye someone up because it gives me a very good idea of like what information I should take seriously from them or not. I love it. An unusual one. I don't know if you get many people saying that. I, I for this one... It's something that I definitely use to my advantage in, in seeing where somebody is at. And the reason I do that, well, it's not my intention through the call is to size them up and see what level they're at in business. But my intention is to ask them questions based on the website and the, the data that I've been provided to, get, to ensure it's correct and then also ask questions that I haven't got answers to yet. And when they can when they give me these answers, that allows me to have a sense of what level they're at, Charlie. And that why that's very beneficial to me is, and if it's, I will probe and ask questions further, much like what you would be doing as well, into how they've gone about either hiring or gotten really good at writing or getting a better, uh, you know, quality sense of traffic to their site or whatever it is. I would probe deeper into that. And the reason being is because I get to leverage off their knowledge and education. And from me doing hundreds and hundreds of calls to sellers, I've learned so much about websites. And from having all these calls and much like my clients, what I say to my clients is that when you have multiple calls and you're consistent jumping on the phone with people that are selling websites, you learn so much from them and you learn so much from the business that they've grown and what those things are that they've used to grow their business. And this is all knowledge you can get for free and you can take that knowledge, take notes on it. And when you do buy your own website is you can implement all those different strategies that will be best for that business according to what type of business model you actually buy. And that's just probably one of the most beneficial things about jumping on the phone with a seller. Yeah, it's the experience they bring. I'm like I agree with that so much. And especially as you get more experience in hearing their answers, like it's just such a powerful education. It really really is undervalued in my uh, opinion as well. Yeah. So I um, I want you to finish off the le- off number 3, but for me when I first was shaking my hand profusely and went to jump on the phone with a seller and not knowing anything about websites when I first started, I was tripping over my questions and I learned so much from, from then, but it, I was in a pretty nervous state. And oh, when dude, I was, dude, me too. <laughs> <laughs> 
Isn't it funny? And but that everybody starts there, yeah. And now I think that's the best thing that somebody can do is is put themselves in a position where they're uncomfortable, jump away from the keyboard or behind, from behind the screen, and say, "Hey, I'm here. I want to learn about your business." But in learning about your business, you get to learn so much about online business in general. Uh, and it's a it's a scary thing, but it's just a level of education you just can't get. You can't pay for that, really. Well, I think back to when I first started, and I can only imagine the perception and vibe I was giving out. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm very confident in my ability now. Yeah. But it wasn't always that way. And it's like I was, um, I suppose I'll say naive and arrogant as well in thinking I knew things, which is the dangerous area to be in is thinking you know something. Oh, um, yeah. But I didn't have people around me like you or, you know, the community again to kind of um, – help me understand these things. So I'm pretty sure I made some huge mistakes with that as well. Yeah, I, I definitely did as well. And um, before you jump to number three, do you mind if I tell a little story about um, that where I learned something that's going to help everybody listening? Oh, you have to. You can't tease like that. <laughs> so my first, very first business, uh, it was a, a flipper business and I was buying it off flipper. And uh, I forget, this is like, 24 so this is like five years ago now and i didn't know like i'd been doing due diligence for like six months or so and i basically taught myself everything i knew up until this point just by being a keyboard warrior and it was a guy that was in australia gratefully but he had a um he had an accent in in indian accent and i spoke to him called him up and what I did is I started asking him questions and I could tell that he was getting really frustrated with the questions I was asking. And I'm thinking, why is he, what? but he was pretty cool about it. He knew I was a total rookie here and I'm asking these, him these questions and he's just like, I could tell there's some silence and the reason he didn't, he wasn't very happy the way I was asking questions is because I would ask him something about the SEO and then I'd ask him something about, you know, Facebook marketing or whatever it was. I can't even remember. Uh, and then I'd ask him something about the financials. And then I'd go back to SEO questions again. And then I'd go back to like the financials after that. And it was just so mumbled and jumbled up that I didn't really have, like I had a few questions, but I wanted to just learn more from this person who just seemed like a gun in online businesses. So I just tried to stay on the phone and ask more questions, that, questions that I was just making up as I went. And when I first started learning stuff, you know, the quality of questions you have determines the quality, you know, the answers are that you get and the quality of your life. <laughs> and my life wasn't very quality back then, Charlie. <laughs> and neither were my questions. And, um, so that was a huge thing that I learned was that when you do go to speak to sellers is have your questions listed out before you speak to them and have them in a certain order. So when you do speak to them, it's in the conversational flow that it's not like jumping backwards and forwards. And while you touch on one subject, bring everything else up as well. Totally. I think that's like a pro tip right there is like if you come to the call really prepared, I think it yeah. makes a huge difference in how the call goes. Preparation is key for, for everything, isn't it? Preparation is life, man. Yeah. So number three, Charlie. Sorry for cutting you off again. <laughs> no, but a worthy point. You can, you know, dive in anytime you like, Jared. So number three for me, um, what, well, this is my other favorite part, is, you know, the first two things I've gone over is, you know, already spoken about understanding where they're at and the level of things they have done. So, you know, you know how to gauge it up. Mm. And then, oh, what was my point one again? I've gone blank. So you've gone, so you you had motivation. Like oh, motivation it, for sale. Why is yeah. This, yeah, why are they selling it? And then what level are they at? You know, is it they're, you know, um, they're, they're really good at writing content like that lady was really good at writing content but had no SEO strategy type thing. Yeah, so this is the next part I look for is part three here is like where what they had planned next or what they would do to the business next. Um, and I'll give you some examples here as well is that if someone's uh, selling a business, they've got all the experience within that business 
and they've already laid the foundations and done a lot of things that might not be obvious at the at you know the surface level what I'm looking at. Yeah. So my favorite thing is to spend a bit of time with them, just looking at going well. If I was to buy this business, but let's pretend you were going to keep it, what would be the things you would prioritize next? Like, what's the important stuff to work on in this business next? Love it. Now, um, I, I kind of frame it in two points net as well. And I go, if money was no object is definitely one of them. So look at what where they could do if they could be aggressive. And then the other side of it is looking at what they could do out of the cash flow the business produces. Mm-hmm. So they're the two levels because I like to know, um, well, again, it shows you a lot. It shows you what they've thought about and it shows you if they'd plan to sell it or if this was like a fire sale. So someone who's got a plan may um, have already thought about all these other things because they maybe weren't intentful of selling it at this moment. Something might have changed. Mm. But a certain type of seller was like, well, I only plan to bring the business to here and then sell it. So you got to you really lean into that, and that understanding can be really useful when it comes to making a decision as well. It's probably one of the most useful points in understanding whether to proceed with the business or not, because, or in my opinion, because you get to have an understanding from somebody who's already been in the business for however long, knowing a lot more about the business, a lot more about their audience, a lot more about their product, their services, or whatever it is. And from knowing all of this sort of stuff, which can take them only experience and that can only get um, brought in via years, years that you wouldn't have when you first bought the business, you get to leverage off that knowledge. And I think that's one of the most powerful things to ask when speaking to, and I was going to mention that as well, Charlie, if you hadn't, is that ask them, how would you grow this business if time and money wasn't a factor? Like that's the best question out there i believe can i tell a story on this one bring it please I feel like i've got a story for everything this is only <laughs> a quick one but it's like um i remember i looked at a site and in my due diligence i always uh play a game with myself of like you know what's the low hanging fruit what's the medium hanging fruit and what's the really like hard hanging fruit what's the stuff that's hard to do and like i categorize what i'm going to do to a business or site you know out of that when i do my due diligence Now, this particular business I was looking at, like the low-hanging fruit for me was remarketing. They just didn't do any remarketing. They weren't running any ads and I just knew that was going to work well. But when I spoke to the seller, it was like, you know, it obviously wasn't on his agenda at all. Otherwise, they would have done it. Um, But I said to him, like, what do you think the next things are? Like, have you considered remarketing? And he goes, I have considered it, but the things I would really look at is that the supplier we work in actually gives us a much better discount um, when we uh, handle things in a certain way. So what I would focus on is actually bringing down the cost of product. And like, there's no way I could have picked that up Mm. in due diligence. No chance Uh, at all. And it was like a 15% saving. And I was like, you're telling me I can pull 15% more profit out of this business by just doing that. And then the second part was, he's like, oh, we used to send emails, but um, I don't do it anymore because my wife used to do it um, and she didn't want to do it. So we just stopped sending emails. But when we used to do it, that used to make us like three or four grand a month. And I'm like, right. (laughs) (laughs) It's so cool because these are some questions that they have probably forgotten to ask themselves. And probably a reason that they want to sell the business is they've forgotten to ask themselves about these questions. And when you come to a point like, hey, I want to buy this and you're asking questions, I dare say, and I've I've felt this on the other end of the phone energetically with people is that when I ask certain questions like this, they're going, oh my God, there's still much, there's still so much opportunity in this business. But at the same time, they may have just they may be in a position where like, oh, I just don't have the energy for it anyway. It was resources in this case. They didn't have the resources. Yeah. Um, I don't know what happened. I won't go into that. But apparently the wife was in the business and then uh, maybe a health-related issue was yeah. not available and then it was all on the husband. And Anyway, um, but the I, point you know, not, is, not my story to tell. It was, that was the experience in this case. Yeah, and that's just such a great point is that that's why it's so valuable to speak to the seller because these are things that you just cannot get from a prospectus 
or from looking at the traffic and the financials and the opt-in rates and the emails and things like that. It's just, you just have to have really good questions. And one of my, uh, I did a, um, a Facebook live uh, in my group. I do trainings into my community. You've seen them, Charlie. And one of them is uh, people get to ask me absolutely anything they want. And uh, there was sometimes people had jumped on the lives and they had they just forgotten or froze on a spot. And this is the same with me. Like when I was speaking to my first seller is they froze on a spot and didn't know what sort of questions to be asking or how to ask those questions. And they one of them afterwards uh, posted in the community like how how do I know what questions to ask or how do I uh, I think the question was how do I ask better questions and I'm like I think that is the best question to ask almost ever because you you can't just go away and be perfect at asking questions straight away you just my answer was just to practice and practice and practice and I think by practicing and practicing and practicing asking questions with sellers you know, after you've spoken to five to 10 or more sellers, you're going to be a gun at this. I tend to agree, but there's almost a little shortcut as well though, Jared. So like definitely experience counts for a lot. I'm not going to deny it. Like experience, I think is an absolute cornerstone of like being better at this whole game of buying and selling websites and buying online businesses. It really, really is. But on the other side of things is there's so much good information and good programs and good communities these days that I'm not sure I would start from scratch. Like my whole methodology now, and this is literally what I do, is copy Jared, then tweak with experience. (laughs) (laughs) Just copy somebody's done it before. Yeah, absolutely. Like I, I wouldn't just like go out there. So like, you know, from this person's perspective, it's like, well, Jared, what questions do you ask? And then use that as a, you know, a guiding post. Yes. And then with experience and learning and doing research and programs, you, you'll tweak it up and find your way. I definitely wouldn't be trying to work this out from scratch on my own. Definitely. That'd be a nightmare. Yeah. I mean, you do fast track the type of question you can ask via asking a mentor or a coach. And speaking about asking better questions, Charlie, is I wanted to dig deeper on, and this is what I like to do, in your first point which is finding out what the motivation of the seller is for why they're selling the business and it could be yeah all right uh, i need to sell this business because i i'll give you i'll tell you a story lay down on this one is there was a kid from the usa and he was selling a business and this business sold it was a drop shipping business and this business sold bird cages <laughs> and it was doing i think it might have been a sixty thousand dollar business something like that sixty thousand us and i was looking at this it was either my second or third business i can't rightly remember but i remember speaking to him and i said to him all right why are you selling this business and he said i want to sell it so i can afford to go to college and back then I didn't know how to dig deeper into the motivation. And there's a reason to why I feel that we should dig deeper into the motivation. It doesn't mean like you have to, like I said before, hardcore interrogation, but you can just open up more questions to open the conversation a little bit further. And so, and the reason I like to do this now is because you, under, you know, any motivation, there's always a deeper reason. And then under that, there's always another deeper reason you can get to the real core of why they really, really want to sell this business. And so for me, if I was back in that position, I would have asked how, okay, cool. So how much is actually like, you want to go to college, man? How much is college in the States? And he might say, oh, it's, you know, 50K. I said, okay, cool. So like how much, how, how much have you got now saved for? Like, he might say, oh, well, I've got nothing, but I, I just really need $50,000 so I can get to college. What do you think I'm going to do from there, Charlie? Probably offer him $50,000. Exactly. <laughs> you know? And if he said no, I'd say, right, I'll, I'll pay for your college and I'll give you five grand in a payment plan over six months or whatever. But can you see that asking and finding out a deeper motivation can give you a lot of leverage in your offer? 
absolutely understanding their circumstance mm. makes a huge difference. Like, do they need money now or can you leverage time? You just don't know. In that example, like it sounded like they had a pretty due deadline for cash. So you might not have gotten, uh, you know, nothing down and pay it off over some months type deal happening here. Yeah. Oh, I, and to be honest, I didn't even know uh, to ask. I didn't even dig deeper. I, you know, I didn't get to ask that question, how much does college, college uh, cost? And in hindsight, I, I, could have got a, I could have bought that business and got a really good deal. And it would have been a win for him as well because he would have just gone, cool, I got the cash right now. Let's go, let's go to college. So uh, that's why I find it's really important. And for me, Charlie, there's some, a few other things that I feel, and those three points that you touched on is are so valuable. And uh, I thank you so much for sharing those. And there's a couple of things that I want people to understand before they jump on the phone with the seller is that when you do go to call people is not just, like I said, have your questions written out, but get ready to write down the answers and record the call. So you, if you miss something, you can come back to it. Or if you bought the business and like you said, Charlie, that person might be, might be telling you, oh, yeah, I, would, uh, I, I probably wouldn't try remarketing. I would do this with the, you know, and save a 15% on the, the change in the product or whatever that was and then start doing the email marketing again. If you forget that, you can replay this recording again or look back on your notes when you bought the business to go, oh, cool, that's, that's what my strategy is right from the horse's mouth. Do you know, I hate to admit this, I've never thought of recording the call. And of course, get their permission. We're saying, you know, hey, can I record this? Um, but that is such a good idea. I can't believe I haven't done that. Yeah. It, well, it's it's just a simple one. And it's just, I started doing it on Skype when I was, you know, we didn't really, I don't think Zoom was really a thing when I started doing it. Um, but I had to do like a, a, a third party recording thing. And I have used, them, used it before uh, to my advantage and... It's just a really, really good way to go about it. Super clever. I am. Um, I'm going to add that to my list. Is there any other pro tips you have, Jared, or any other things you think maybe pay, uh, play importance in this call? Uh, like you said earlier, it's really important to have the have the preparation done before you jump on the call, and. There's two more things that I, I kind of want to I kind of want to touch on, and that is the first one is building a really good connection with the seller, and this is something that uh, I've I've been told by a lot of people it comes naturally to me, and I don't think it does. I think I've gotten better at this over time because I've been to like. I've been to every continent except Antarctica, Charlie. So I've been around and I talked to a lot of people in a lot of different places and just learned how to really connect to people on different levels. And I feel that this is a really important skill to have and to start building on. And you will do this when you start speaking to more and more people in business. Uh, but I feel it's really important is because if you can build a great relationship and really connect on a great level with uh, a person you buy the business from is that that relationship isn't just going to allow you to learn so much more and be in touch with the person about the business in months and maybe years to come and just drop them an email every now and then but it can be a, a great relationship to do joint ventures on or to build on in the future as well and it doesn't have to have anything to do with the business you did buy from them but it could be a totally different opportunity and I feel that every time you get to have a chat or connect with somebody, building that relationship is a very, very valuable resource or a thing to have for, for both of you guys. Even if you just become good friends, it's, it's still very, very valuable. Um, do you know so what? That, I've never heard a story ever where I was like, do you know what? I was a real asshole and it turned out well. <laughs> <laughs> have you? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think so at all. Actually, unless it was a, a guy treating a woman like, you know, playing hard to get or like vice versa. Um, but not, I still think that's not a good, good thing to do anyway. But 
Yeah, I don't. I dare say it. No. <laughs> but but even then, is like even if you have to like negging or something, you don't have to be an asshole to um, even do well there. But it's yeah. like in general, I think people forget that like it never serves you well to be an asshole in any circumstance. Never, never. So, and that's that's a great point, Charlie. Is is when you're on the phone call with them, and I think I may have written notes down on this. Is that always be nice. Always be very grateful for the time that somebody spends with you. And if they're giving you answers and it's not quick enough, just be patient because they could develop that sentence or that paragraph or whatever they're saying could develop into something that is an amazing, um, an amazing flower of knowledge like what Charlie got, those little golden nuggets of, oh, yeah, you could do some unique emailing or you know get an extra 15% margin out of this product by just being really nice, being patient, and being really grateful for their time. Absolutely. So that's a really good point, Charlie. Glad we got that one in. It's always nice to have that. Yeah. And so last one I want to talk about is when you finish up the call with somebody, I find, Charlie, is it's really good to ask them, you know, you're going to do a trans, you're thinking about doing a transaction with them. It'd be silly not to ask them about how they want it to go. And I'll give you an example. So say, Charlie, I want to come in and I speak to you on the phone and I'm like, oh, cool, I want to buy one of your websites. And we have a really good conversation. I've gotten all my notes from the due diligence. We build a really good rapport, really good connection. At the end of the call, I'm going to say something like, hey, Charlie, this is a, I'm super grateful for your time uh, you know, and teaching me a lot more about your business. It's going to help me see if this is a an investment I want to proceed on. And I dare say after a lot of the information you give me, uh, it's going to help me get the best answers. And I only want to proceed if this is a win-win for you and me. So I want to ask you if, if it's going to be a win-win, I want to know what's most important to you. And here's the important question here is that how would you prefer to get your finances for this business? Do you want it all in cash at the price that you've listed or would you prefer a little bit more and have a you know give it like a deposit and giving it to you in it in you know a, a payment plan or whatever it is like what would be more important to you would you prefer the more of a cash or you know what and then when you get an answer that's going to help you a lot with your offer because you know what they want understanding their perspective yeah it's a great way to go about it hmm so that, that's probably, I don't think I could squeeze any more into this podcast, to be honest, Charlie. Oh, can I? Yeah, please. You ready? It's really easy. Make more calls. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Practice, right? Absolutely. Do more of this. Yeah, yeah. Because it's not, it's not just you get to learn a lot about uh, being on the phone with the seller and yourself and connecting with people, but you learn so much about online businesses and it's just such a great education, right? Absolutely. Awesome. Well, Charlie, thank you. I am, and honestly, I'm not just saying this because I tell everybody to be grateful for their time, but I honestly am very grateful for your time today and jumping on the podcast yet again. Charlie, where can people go away and find out more about you? Great question. Thank you for having me on the show, Jared. I thoroughly enjoy coming and talking about this stuff. Like, It's such a passion topic for me. Um, look, best place to find my stuff is over at my website, charlievella.com. You can see all my projects and what I get up to there. Um, and I'm also in your community. So if people have questions, they can always like tag me in and I love talking about this stuff in there. You do. And thanks for posting in there and everybody else who does as well. It's, it's greatly appreciated. We've got an awesome bond with everybody in that community. And for those of you guys who uh, and I'll put um, Charlie's links in the show notes. But those of you guys do want to learn more about some of the stuff that I have, and I mentioned a resource earlier in the podcast. Um, if you guys want to get some resources from me, check out my website, buyingonlinebusinesses.com. Go away and click on the resources link and grab many of my tools there. I have that uh, due diligence framework, which I talked about, which helps you actually understand what sort of due diligence, due diligence sorry, you need to do before buying a website or speaking to the seller actually. And then I also have a website evaluator tool which helps you value the websites before you go away and buy them. So check out the website for those tools. Everybody that is listening, thank you so much for jumping on. That's it for this episode. Please be sure to jump on, like and subscribe. And if you did like this podcast episode, please be sure to leave a review 
and let me know what you actually liked about it so I can bring more episodes to you just like this. Thanks, guys. 